this should be pretty easy today. Um, I said if you, I'm going to use a math color just because I prefer it. All right, so we're talking about um, reciprocal, the parent reciprocal function right here, which is f of x is equal to 1 over x. It is the reciprocal of x. Um, so if you look at this right here, and we get ready to start graphing this, if I, I mean, and granted, yes, you can put it in your calculator, but we just choose numbers because, guys, I mean, in reality, you should be able to graph by hand. If I choose zero, because that's where we always start, and I plug in a zero for x, what happens right there? What happens if I have zero where x is? What happens when you do one divided by zero? It's an error. Why? Yeah, you can't divide by zero. It's undefined. Guys, y'all should be able to answer that question immediately. That is a sixth grade question. Like I taught it in sixth grade. All right, it is undefined. At x is equal to zero. That's about to be on a test somewhere. And you have to write it out. All right, because we should know that immediately. Like, you just should. You can't divide by zero. So if it is undefined at x is equal to zero, then that means I have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to zero. Right here, because that value won't work. We okay there? All right, so then as I start choosing other numbers to plug in, if I choose one, then I have one divided by one, which is one. So then I have this point right here. If I choose two, then I end up with a half. If I choose three, I end up with a third. If I choose four, I end up with a fourth. So I'm getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Can I end up at zero there? Yeah, Celie's shaking her head no over here. Why can I not end up at zero? Because it never touches the zero. Yeah, so think about division. Is there any way that you can ever divide and get zero? Now, unless you started with zero, that's the only way because we can't have zero in the denominator. It's okay to have zero in the numerator. But I can't have zero in the denominator, so there is absolutely no way mathematically that you can divide and get zero. So it's never going to touch that y-axis, which means I also have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero. So I have one coming across here. We okay there? And why that happens. All right, so if I were to choose other numbers in between here, like, for example, a half, well, if I had a half in the denominator, that means it'd flip over and I would get two. We are out there. So at half, I'd have positive two, and I can continue doing that, and it's gonna get closer and closer and closer to this asymptote. So it ends up looking like a curve that looks like this. All right, but it's not gonna touch either of those asymptotes. If I go on the other side of that and I choose negative numbers, then if I put a negative one in there, then one divided by negative one is negative one, so I have this point here. And I'm gonna end up having the same situation. If I choose negative two, I'm gonna get negative one half, negative three would be negative one third, negative one fourth, and so on. And the same thing here, if I chose negative one half, it would flip over and give me a negative two. So it would be right here. So it does this right here on this side. So basically I get these two kind of L-ish shaped things that are symmetric that are basically a reflection of each other across the origin. Are we okay there? Like that's where that reflection happens. So they're going to be in opposite quadrants basically, diagonal from each other. Is everybody okay there? And they're going to be symmetrical. All right, so this type of graph is called a hyperbola. So that's like what its name is. Um, when we write the domain here, how do you think we would write that? All reals. It's not all real. It's almost all real, but not quite. Domain represents which values? X. Which x value am I not touching? Zero. zero. So my domain is 
not zero because I have everything on the right side, everything on the left th left side. The only thing I can't touch is zero. Is everybody okay there? Mm -hmm. All right, what about my range? Y is also not equal to zero because I can't touch that asymptote. So your asymptotes and your range and domain are going to match. Are we okay there? All right. So now we'll talk about transformations. Again, transformations do not change. It does not matter what kind of function that you have. Now these are going to look slap. This is going to look a little bit different because my x is in a denominator in my parent function. So I have f of x is equal to, and I have, here they usually write a on top, and then you'll have x minus h here, and then plus k, and when we get into pre-cal, we can have a b value, but we don't usually see them in <coughs> algebra 2, but it would, if, that, if you had one, it would be out here, and this would be in a parentheses, and the b would be on the outside, or sorry, no, it'd be on the inside of the parentheses with your x, we okay there? So if I have an h value here, h is always the same as it is in every function because it's connected to the x value. It is horizontal because it's attached to the x and x's are horizontal. And I always use translation so you can use your ht um, abbreviation. And remember horizontals are always opposites. So if it's positive, it's actually gonna go to the left and if it's negative it's going to end up going to the right. right my k values are my vertical translation i get to take them for face value so if it's positive it's going up and if it's negative it's going down <coughs> my a value if it has a negative attached to it then that's going to cause my graph to reflect it's going to be reflected across the x-axis um, and if my a value and they're saying the absolute value the reason they're putting absolute value there is because if there's a negative sign out there the negative really doesn't have anything to do with the shrink or stretch the negative touches but it has to do with the reflection so we're looking at the absolute value of a if it's greater than one then it's going to be a vertical stretch if a is between zero and one so a uh, proper fraction or uh, less than one decimal then it would be a vertical shrink we don't see those two very often here's how that would look it would basically be if i had a parentheses right here around an x minus six plus whatever some number and i had a number in front of the parentheses out here that would be a shrink because it's in the denominator does that make sense mm -hmm. yes. okay they're not going to write it as a fraction in the numerator. They're going to write like one up here and like a three down here. So that's kind of how that would look. Are y'all all right with that? But the three wouldn't be directly attached to the X. It would have to be on the outside of the parentheses there. All good? Okay. All right. If I had this B out here, it would be directly attached to the X, probably and most likely inside of a parentheses. And so that rule is kind of the same as we always have those. It would be the opposite. So if B was greater than one, then it would be a horizontal shrink. And if B was less than one, it would be a horizontal stretch. I really don't, you're not going to see those in algebra two. And the same way, if I had a negative with this X inside of a parentheses, that would be a Y axis reflection. You're not going to see it in algebra two. I don't know if it shows up in a college algebra class or not, but if it does, then that way you know where it is. All right, it, we do see it in pre-cal. All right, so my vertical asymptote is gonna be at X is equal to H. My horizontal asymptote is gonna be at Y is equal to K. So when we had quadratic functions, our vertex was at H and K. So here we don't have a vertex. We basically have where my graph splits and it splits at H and K. Everybody okay there? All right, remember this is gonna be the opposite sign. All right, so here what they're wanting us to do is write the equation from the description. So it says the reciprocal parent function is reflected across the X axis. So what does it have to have if it's reflected across the X axis? A negative. Yeah, it's gonna have a negative 
a lot of times they're going to write these in the numerator and I know it's a reciprocal function so I'm going to go ahead and draw a fraction bar because I know I'm going to have one. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the negative in the top um, to reflect it across the x-axis. Then it's translated four units to the right. Where does that go? On the bottom with my x. And if it's to the right, it's going to be what sign? Yeah, it's going to be subtraction because it's going to be the opposite. Good. All right, then it says um, three units down. So what do I do with that? Yeah, minus three back here at the back. And then they don't give me anything else. So since I don't have anything else up here, it's a one. Is everybody okay there? Mm -hmm. All right, the other way, this might could this could be written. Um, you might would have a negative out here, and that would be in a parentheses, and it would be like one over x minus four, and then minus three. Or they might would have the one and then the x minus four in a parentheses with the negative out front. So it's just kind of some variations that it could be written. Are we all right there? Okay, this one here, um, the reciprocal parent function is vertically stretched by a factor of two. So I already know I have f of x is equal to, if it's a reciprocal function, it has to be a fraction. Where does that two go? Yep, goes in the numerator. Good, so stretched by two. Then it's tra and it says translated seven units up. Where does that go? Plus seven back here at the back. All right, and then it says one unit to the left. X plus one. X plus one down here in the denominator. And they want us to write the equation. This could look, if they wanted to write this differently, it could look like a two out here with one over X plus one and then a plus seven back there. Like they could write it that way. It means the same thing because I could separate that two out front. Does that make sense to y'all? So also, like, so you know I said, like, if we had a shrink there and it was a vertical shrink by a half or whatever, then they probably would write it, they might could write it with a half out front. Does that make sense? They could put the two out here outside the X at the bottom if that's a shrink by half. Everybody okay there? I mean, it's just different ways they can sometimes write it because they mean different things. I mean, they mean the same thing, it's just different ways to write it. All right, um, this one, a reciprocal function, has a vertical... Um, asymptote that is located at x equals negative 2. So what am I doing with that? I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Okay, go back up there and look where asymptote, what vertical asymptote is connected to, which variable. Okay. So how would I write that? Yep, it'd be down here, it'd be x plus 2. All right, and then it has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 5. Where does that go? At the back. How am I writing it? Plus 5. Plus 5 back here. That's all they gave me. They didn't give me other, any other information, so that means that must be a 1 up there. All good there? So you just use your very like, okay. Oh. Yeah, whatever it's attached to. So remember, verticals are going to be attached. The vertical asymptote is going to be attached to um, the x value because your the vertical asymptote is your h, which is attached to x. Are y'all okay there? It's just going to be the opposite sign. Any questions on that one? Okay, so real quick right here, I want to look at this, which we're going to talk about in just a second. But remember over here, if we have zero in the denominator, it's undefined at that location, right? Mm -hmm. So if I look at this problem right here. If I, what number would I put in here and make the denominator zero? Positive four, right? Which means my asymptote's gonna be at positive four. That's why there's an asymptote there because the asymptote is whatever would cause that function to not work. And I'm not allowed to have zero in the denominator. So that's why whatever I'm adding or subtracting down here, the sign changes because that's what would give you a zero down there, kind of why that happens. Everybody all right there? Okay, so we get back here. So, number four, transformation. What do I have there? Yep, VT down two. So, what that means is my whole graph got pushed down. So, if I take a look at this graph right here, my whole graph got pushed down, which means my horizontal asymptote is no longer at zero. It's going to now be at 
negative two because it went down. Does that make sense? So my this went down by two. I didn't have anything to change my horizontal asymptote because there's nothing with x. We, I mean, sorry, my vertical asymptote because there's nothing with x. So that means it's still right here at that axis line. Are we okay there? Okay, which means I now I can really answer all this information right here without even having to graph that function. Does that make sense? So my vertical asymptote is at x is equal to zero. My horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative two, which means I can now answer my domain and range. X cannot be zero and y cannot be negative two. All right, so because I still have a one right here, so what happens, so you remember over here, like this little point over here, so here was basically my corner, and I was one over and one up and one over and one down because this is one, we okay there? So here, this is still one, which means I'm still gonna be over one and up one right here, and I'm gonna be over one and down one right here. And those are still gonna be approaching that axis line and a lot of times if you graph this in your calculator it's probably going to stop your graph may not continue that does not really mean that your graph stop it means your graph the pixels on your graph won't let it do any further that doesn't mean the graph stop because sometimes you'll try to do that and that's not really what it does it goes it continues going so don't draw your graph as stopping make sure you put arrows on it kind of seals feel okay there all right, so this one here, what happens with this one? HT to the left three. Good, HT to the left three, which means it moves what? Over three. What moves over three? Your vertical. Yeah, your whole graph moves over, but your vertical asymptote moves over as well, right? Yes. So my vertical asymptote moved from zero to negative three, so it's here. Did anything change in my horizontal asymptote there? No. So it's gonna still be right here at zero, which means I can go ahead and fill this stuff out. My vertical asymptote is at x equals negative three. My horizontal is at y equals zero. zero. So that means my domain is x cannot equal negative three. Very good, and my range is y cannot equal zero. Perfect. So my numerator is still a one, which means this point right here is still here. And it's gonna do this here. And this one right here is gonna be right here. You come down this way. All right, y'all okay there? Like, yeah, you can it in the calculator, that's fine. Like, I don't care. I just, if it's a one in the numerator, you really don't need to. And save yourself some time. Y'all okay there? All right. This one here. What is my? What are my transformations? Vt up one and then a x-axis reflex. Yeah. First, I've got an x-axis reflex. I've got that happening. All right. Then I've got this four. What is that? Yep. V stretch by four. And then this does what? of one. So my only asymptote um, that moved is my horizontal. It went up one. Are we okay there? My vertical didn't move, so it's at zero. All right, so my vertical asymptote is x is equal to zero. My horizontal asymptote is Y equals one, so what's my domain? X cannot be zero. And range? Y cannot be one. I cannot be one, okay. So this time, because I have this four right here, what's gonna happen is this point that's normally right here is gonna be stretched out away from there. So it's gonna pull it away from that corner. Does that make sense? Um, let's see, I'm just gonna pick some numbers. So I'm gonna use two, I'm gonna choose two first. So negative four divided by two is negative two, and negative two plus one is negative one. So I'm gonna have two and negative one right here. And again, you can graph that in your calculator and you can get that. That's what you'll get there. Does that make sense? 
Um, let's see, I can't use, let's see if I use one there. Negative four over one is negative four plus one gives me negative three. So this point would be right here. And let's see if I use, I'm not gonna use three because it's not nice. If I use four, negative four divided by four is negative one plus one gives me zero right there. So those are the only points that are gonna be nice. I mean, there's other points, but those are the only ones that are nice. I'm kind of doing those in my head. All right, so it's gonna be the same on the other side. If I use negative one in the denominator, negative four divided by negative one is one plus one gives you two. So you're right, uh, not right there. Negative four, negative one. Do a positive four, so plus one gives you five. Um, if I use negative 2, that'd give me 2 plus 1 would be 3. So there. And if I use negative 4, that would give me a positive 1 plus 1 would give me 2 right there. That's it. Again, you can graph it in your calculator. That's totally fine. You want to do that. Okay. Alright, all good there. Any questions on how I got those points? I mean, I just did the math real quick but otherwise you can get them out of your calculator. All right, so seven transformations there. Do you stretch by three? Yep, do you stretch by three. What else? Um, horizontal transition to your right two. Very good, and? V two down two. V down two, so that means both of my asymptotes move this time. So my vertical moved over to positive two. My horizontal moved down to negative two. Y'all okay there? All right, and again, like I have a number in my enumerator, so um, it's not one, so that's gonna pull this away. And I don't know those numbers off the top of my head. Um, but if I chose positive three, three minus two would be one. So three over one would be three minus two would be positive one. So three and positive one. So it does end up being right there. That worked out nicely. Is that right? Maybe? Mm -hmm. Oh, positive one. Not there. It's negative one. Positive one. Sorry. Um, I know five can five will work. Five minus two gives me three. Three divided by three is one. One minus two is negative one. So it's five. And that negative is one right there. Which means did anybody graph this in their calculator? Okay, I think that means this point probably right here. Two, three, four is probably going to be at negative half. It's going to be right in the middle there because you have a two in the denominator there. If we put a four down there, so it'd be three halves minus two. So yeah, so you do right there. Like most of these, you probably only have about three or four points. You're not going to have very many that you can grab. All right, so then over here on this side, let's see if I choose. One's not nice. I'm gonna choose zero. Oh, that's not nice either. If I choose one, oh, one work. One minus two gives me a negative one. So three over negative one, negative three minus two, negative five. So that positive one, I'm gonna be at negative five. Negative five here. Uh, zero is not gonna be nice. Negative one would give me a negative three in the denominator. So three divided by negative three would be negative one minus two, be negative three. So negative one and negative three, which means at zero, I'm gonna be at the half right there. Again, like you'll graph them if you want to in your calculator, I don't care. Okay, so that's kind of what we got. Um, vertical asymptote is gonna be at? X equals two. X equals two. Horizontal is gonna be at? Y equals two. Okay, so domain is? X cannot equal two. And range? Y cannot equal negative two. 
Okay, any questions on those? Okay, and like I said, we don't have any really. If you were to have one, so like this one right here had this um, reflection, so you can see how I went from quadrant one and three to quadrant two or four and two when we reflected across the axis. If I had a y axis reflection, then it would go this way, and I, so they so that might kind of it would look similar to an x axis reflection. Like they appearance wise, they look kind of the same. We okay there? All right, any questions you all want to do? Eight and nine, or are you all good? Y'all are good? Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't be doing with my other class.